What's up everyone, this is Justin Romack and this is the first installment of the No Eyes Needed series. You know, I, when I started when I started having ideas about doing this, really what I had intended to do was do a series over using Windows Movie Maker to edit videos with JAWS. And so that was my initial goal, is I just wanted to do a tutorial series and, and get that information out there as quickly as possible because I know that there's some folks that are really interested in it. However, I think it's developed into something more, more worthwhile for me, and I, I want want to share it with you. I'm really interested in finding these things, um, like video editing, something that's considered really something for visual people, and taking that and seeing how our community, our our little our, our market, our minority can really use that, and so. This No Eyes Needed series is going to turn into something more. It's going to turn into product demonstrations and tutorials and workarounds and workthroughs and all sorts of accommodative things that we can really work on. So know that this will develop into something more. This is going to be a multi-part series on Windows Movie Maker. I want to start today in the first section really talking about how you conceptualize a video and some technical things that folks who are sighted impaired might want to consider when making a video. Now, first off, these these a lot of these details that we're going to talk about in the first video are things that sighted impaired and sighted individuals can all agree on. They're really things that could apply to anybody. So, let me first start about talking about how you conceptualize a video. What goes into putting a video together? Well, a video is basically a story with moving pictures. I mean, that's that's exactly what it is. We are in a culture now that really relies on getting information and detailed information in a quick amount of time. You know, you've got Twitter and you've got Facebook and mainly YouTube are really helping to spur this free flow of information in a real-time manner. And YouTube is such a great medium because you can put a video up like this in no time flat. I mean, I can I can shoot my video and then the next thing you know it's on the internet. And so I can disseminate information over a large amount of area in a very quick amount of time. So that's what really I think is the is the great thing about video is that you can tell your story, you've got lots of imagery and, and visuals that you can really bring your re or bring your viewer in with with detail. I mean, you can get the whole scope of the story. And so from a blind person's perspective, I know we don't care we we really don't care about video. I don't. I I oftentimes just lay my head down when I'm watching a movie. I don't need to to look at the screen. Um, you know, the Harry Potter series, I'm sure that the the videography, the the filming of that video is brilliant, but the visual effects don't mean anything to me unless the story is good. So we as as sighted impaired video designers, we really have to think of what our story is, what our message is. Now my good buddy Todd Wright, you can find him at youtube.com forward slash Toddy Row, T O D D Y R O. Um, I really admire his vlog series. I think he does a really, really good job. And I would, I would definitely advise you to go check him out. We have been talking recently about what makes a good video. And when I started my Vlurb series, I wanted to tell a story. I wanted to share those entertaining and funny things that happen in life in a really interesting way. And so Todd says that there's some elements that really go into this. And let, let's just look at the three of these real quick. You've got pacing and delivery basically the timing of your video. You've got the characters, the other people that are involved. And then you've got the idea of being a student of, of really just relevance, what's relevant in the, the video culture, the YouTube culture. So let's look at delivery, the timing. How How's your story paced? You know, what parts fit in your story? How do those parts fit together? Um, is it appropriate to, you know, where is it appropriate to, to progress? How quickly? Um, these are all things that you need to think of, and I think that blind people can do this. I know that blind people can do this. We can tell stories. This doesn't have anything to do with vision. So really making sure that your story times out right. Um, you know, Todd does a lot with timing different clips and timing, you know, really the, the funny part of his video, saving it for a part where you either don't expect it or you expect it and it's it works. It's funny. 
So that's the first part. The second part is your characters, the people that are involved in your video. Um, I've done four flurbs now, and I have had no additional characters up until... Well, I had my wife in one. But really, the best part about making these videos is getting people involved. They can share in the amusement, they can share in the entertainment, they can laugh at the situation, you know, play into the situation. Um, you just get a different dynamic to the story, and so that, that adds to the story. This final idea of really keeping up with what's relevant in the, the culture now. You know, Todd follows a ton of video bloggers, and I would really recommend you to do that. It really will just help you to understand what everyone else is doing. You can kind of get fresh ideas, um, and I think that anything that's art-related like this, you really feed off of ideas that you see, what works and what doesn't, what fits your taste, what fits your style. So I really encourage you to... To, to sit down and subscribe to some of these channels and, and glean a lot of how they tell the story. And if you've got somebody that's got sight there, tell you, get them to describe what they're doing that's interesting and unique from a video perspective. Um, that's really, I, just focus on storytelling. Really, that's what your videos are going to do. But they're gonna present this visual canvas at the same time. Just remember that when you're making your videos. Technical details, let's run down real quick. Um, I'm shooting in what is known as our office. This is my video chair that I'm sitting in. And the reason I like this room is because it's got a nice overhead light. I know where the shadows are going to be cast. I kind of know how the room is laid out. Um, I know positioning of the tripod and, and where I need to do all of that and how the room looks. Um, the things you want to be careful to avoid is a lot of light behind you, especially windows. I don't like to shoot videos in front of windows because the, the light from the window just saturates the, the frame and really just takes away from your subject. So overhead light is good. Light from the front is, is great too. It really helps to minimize shadows. So the other idea of shooting in thirds, the rule of thirds, where you divide your frame up into three parts and you really keep your subject either on the left or right, rarely in the center. It's, it's more artistic and that's great. I, I would love to be able to do that. But I think oftentimes, as, as being someone without vision, you struggle with knowing where your subject is in the frame. So my philosophy is to take a step backwards and get the subject, mainly focus on getting a broad picture so that I get the subject. And if they seem to fall on the left or the right side of the frame, that's great. Um, now, understand that if it's on a tripod, you can kind of play around with it. Um, I oftentimes touch up towards the camera and feel where the camera is. I can get an idea as to where it's pointing. Um, I also like to, to make sure that um, if I am holding the camera in my hand, I don't stress out so much about how I fit into the shot. Look, sighted people don't know when they're holding the camera in front of them with their hand and shooting the camera at themselves, they don't know what they're getting. And so we just have to understand that when you do these quick little vlurbs, these vlogs, that it, it really helps to take away from some of the pressure um, put on production quality. So understand that videos don't have to look superb um, as long as your story backs up what you're showing um, and people get a decent idea of what's around you. I think that that's the most important part. So those are a few technical aspects. We will involve more as we go along. This is, this is a great launching point. I think this is a great starting point for us to, to really build and expand on. I'm super excited about this series. I'm super excited about what it's going to offer. Super excited about what I'm going to learn and be able to share with you. Um, and I want to know what you find important. I want to know if you find this useful. So next video we're going to move on to the layout of Windows Movie Maker and how JAWS interacts with it. And then we're going to start to make some videos. So I'm excited about this. If you've got any feedback, don't don't ever hesitate to leave a comment on the blog. Get me by email, jromack, R-O-M-A-C-K, at gmail.com. Or you can catch me on my cell phone number, 936-635-0136. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to share with you, and evidently that person's really excited about this too. So, hey, it's been fun. We will see you in the next video. Take care.